Back in my day, they used to last for 20 years, but these ones only last for one year. Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven and welcome to my one year homeowner anniversary video. Yes, I have officially been a homeowner for one little year, which is really exciting. This year went by super fast. I remember when I first made the decision to buy slash build a house, I remember thinking like, oh my gosh, the building process is gonna take forever. And then this is gonna take forever and then furnishing and then that and this and that. And I just, I couldn't even imagine myself already being moved in and already just living in here for a year. Time has just really been going by super fast. But yes, I have lived in this home for a year. If you guys are new to my channel, definitely check out my entire home shopping, home building, home customizing, home furnishing, home everything playlist that I have on my channel. I have documented everything from the start, looking at houses, deciding to build this house, the whole entire process of building, talking about the financial aspect of it, just everything. I tried to make a video covering pretty much everything every step of the way. So if you have any questions or you just are new to my channel and you missed out on that whole entire journey, definitely go back and check out those videos. I feel like they can answer a lot of questions and give you just more of a deeper insight into my overall experience. But I did wanna make this video and I did take notes just to kind of narrow in on 10 things that I have learned now that I have been a homeowner for one year. So, like I said, I am a first time home buyer, first time home builder, first time home owner in every sense of the word. I have always just uh, rented apartments. I've had a couple of different types of apartments and then I decided to build this home. So I had a lot of learning to do. I had zero experience with anything, definitely not with building a home, definitely not with homes of this size, definitely just, just nothing. Went into it very clueless, but I did have the guidance of my parents so I'm super thankful for them because they were really the ones who kind of walked me through the process and gave me a lot of advice and a lot of knowledge and helped educate me so that I wasn't just completely going into this completely blind. There's like good news and bad news. I think I wanna start with the bad news and get the negative things out of the way first. Five things that I realized that I just didn't just didn't think of, just didn't know. I wasn't aware, but these are kind of like five negative things that I can definitely kind of relay to you guys now to kind of watch out for if any of you guys are going into the home buying process. And the first one is you cannot furnish a home in just a few months, and it's not quick and easy to furnish an entire home, and it's more expensive than I thought to furnish an entire home. Now, of course, there's gonna be exceptions to every single thing that I say in this video because you can um, do things in a different way depending on your budget, depending on your lifestyle. Like, of course, if you just want to get basic functional furniture in your house, you can go to really affordable places like Ikea, you can go to thrift stores, you can buy stuff secondhand off of Facebook Marketplace. I mean, there's so many different options, like affordable options for you out there if you just need to furnish a home fast and cheap. But I guess I'm more so talking about me coming into this home and feeling like this is kind of like my forever home. I call it my big girl house. You know, I really wanted it to be fully and nicely furnished and have a design to it and just be well done and well put together. You know, I wasn't just trying to throw random things in here. I didn't just wanna buy like super cheap furniture. I wanted to invest in quality pieces that were going to last for multiple years. Like I just came into this house with a totally different mindset than I had with like my previous apartments where I was just kind of like, I just need something to sit on. Who really cares? But for this house, I was like, ooh, I want it to look like this and I want it to have this feeling and I want to make sure that it's super functional and super organized. So I don't know why I thought that I would be able to do all of that for the entire house, for every room of the house. And I thought that I was going to be able to get it done in like six months. I remember telling my mom when I first moved in, I was like, oh, I should have the house done by the end of the year. 
No, maybe, I mean, I'm sure it's possible. I'm sure there are people who have done it, but just for exactly what I was trying to do, I just ran into so many issues. I just realized that this is like a long drawn out process. Like by the time that you find something, like a piece of furniture you wanna order, and then you wait for it to be back in stock, and then you order it, and then it takes weeks to arrive, and then it arrives, and then there's like, I mean, so long story short, I realized that I was not going to be able to furnish my entire house and have it set up entirely like I wanted to just real easy in a couple of months. Absolutely not. So then number two going along with that is that when it comes to interior design, since I went into this wanting a certain look and wanting a certain vibe and wanting it to look really aesthetically pleasing, I probably should have hired an interior designer to help me out to really make those visions come true because again I thought oh I can do it myself I love home decor I love interior design I think I have good taste I think I can do it just you know do some research online order some stuff put it together how hard can it be well when you're talking about an entire house with multiple rooms when you're talking about wanting to invest in nice pieces when you're talking about wanting the whole house to flow together nicely when you're like I just realized, okay, there's a reason why interior designers exist. There's a reason why they go to school and have years of experience. And <laughs> you know, maybe I should have hired an interior designer from the start to maybe avoid some of the mistakes. Now, I'm not saying that everybody has to get an interior designer for the house, not at all. But it's just like being realistic with your vision and your goal and understanding the time it's gonna take to get there and kind of what you might need to get there. I clearly did not understand that. <laughs> and then number three, which also goes into this, is I realized when you're ordering furniture, ordering things for a home, there's a good chance that there's gonna be issues. <laughs> with your order, with your delivery, with the shipping. I've just had so many issues. Maybe that's just me, maybe that's just my personal bad luck. I'm sure there are people out there who have never had any issues ordering anything ever. That's not the case for me. I have had so many issues, almost every single thing that I order, and I'm talking about from multiple different brands, different companies, higher end stuff, lower end stuff. The stuff will just arrive damaged, or they'll just send you the completely wrong thing, or they'll only send you half of the couch and then you have to track them down to get them to send you the other half just like I've had such weird experiences now luckily for me some of it worked out in my favor because I was able to like get something for free or you know just kind of get little perks out of it but for the most part it is a headache especially when you're trying to order expensive things like you're spending your hard-earned money on something because you're trying to invest in large pieces of quality furniture for your house just for it to arrive damaged just for it to be not what you expected off of the picture online like I just didn't realize how stressful it can be to buy furniture <laughs> so what I learned along the way is to just be really careful and do a lot of research when it comes to ordering stuff always be familiar with different stores like return policies and shipping policies and stuff like that buy whatever kind of shipping insurance they offer if they have it like you just have to be really careful and double check before you spend a lot of money on something because I just I just have learned that there is just so many things that can go wrong. Okay, and the fourth negative thing that I learned after a year of being a homeowner is that when you are hiring a contractor of any kind to do any kind of work around the house, whether that be remodeling something, adding something, doing a custom built-in, doing a custom outdoor kitchen on your patio, anything like that, you need to do your research. And I mean, do your research thoroughly. You need to get a second and third opinion on whatever it is that you're trying to build or do. I would recommend having three different companies come out and quote you or, or draw you up a rendering or whatever it is. If you can get like three different options and kind of compare instead of just going with the first option that looks good just because it looks good. No. Okay. Take your time. That would be my advice. Every step of the way, take your time. Don't rush into getting anything done. The reason why why I'm like rolling my eyes is because I had such a bad experience with my outdoor kitchen. I know that it might not show from what you guys have seen, like how it looks. It kind of like looks pretty decent from the outside. It was my fault because I was really in a hurry to get 
something built out there because everything was completely bare out there. Nothing was built, nothing was installed. And I really wanted to have a housewarming party and I really wanted to have my patio done in time for the party because that was gonna be like everyone coming over to my house their first time seeing it. I wanted to have like a backyard barbecue and that was something that I wanted to get done. Anyway, like it wasn't just for the party but I really wanted it done in time for the party. So I had a few months, it wasn't like weeks or days leading up. I had a few months leading up to the party and I was like that should be more than enough time if I you know get started now but I ended up only really looking into two different companies like two different contractors didn't look too hard into the second one because the first one really caught my eye because they had like really nice renderings like created this nice digital drawing of what it could look like and just kind of upselling and selling me on it like oh it's gonna look like this and we can do this and we can do that and it's gonna be so beautiful and so instead of really looking deeper into it or getting a second and third opinion i just was like oh that looks really cute. So I'm just gonna go with that one and I'm in a rush. I need to get this project started now. Bruh, I'm not gonna go into the whole story of what ended up happening, but I definitely should have looked into other companies. I definitely should have asked them more questions before they got started and along the way. I don't know, it's like you gotta have contracts. You have to have um, expectations set. Cause what ended up happening for me is that something that was supposed to take maybe a week to build ended up taking months. They ended up being so late. They ended up making so many mistakes. Did I get my money back? No. Did I ever get what I wanted out of the situation? No. I'm pretty much right now thinking that I'm going to rip the whole thing out and that's just going to be a waste of money and that's just going to be a learning experience for me because it's just so sad when you pay for something and you go through all this trouble just for it to not turn out and for you to basically have to pay for it all over again to get it redone or have to live with something that you don't like. Said all that to say, be very careful when you're hiring people. You need recommendations, you need referrals, you need reviews. All of this is probably very self-explanatory, but I think sometimes it is easy to get really excited about something and kind of just, oh, I just want to get it done. I just want to get it done. No, 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 no. It's never worth it. It is never worth it. Oh, and one more thing on that, ask to see several photos of their work beforehand. Again, probably very self-explanatory, but in my case, this person didn't really have a lot of examples of the specific type of thing I was asking for. They had examples of their general work, but not of the specific style or the specific thing that I was asking for. So you wanna make sure that whoever you're working with can actually do what you're asking them to do. You know, like if you have somebody who can put in waterfalls and fountains and ponds, that doesn't mean that they can put in a pool. Just cause they work with water doesn't mean they can do everything with water. So that was kind of like my experience, like, oh, he does this, so he can probably do this. No, you need to see exact pictures of the exact project and make sure that they are qualified to do exactly what you're asking them to do. And the fifth negative thing that I definitely realized after being a homeowner for one year is that it's way different than being in an apartment or any kind of rented space because you cannot call the property manager or the um, maintenance man if something goes wrong or if something is not right. Normally when you're renting or you're at an apartment, if anything goes wrong, that is not your problem. That is the building's problem. You do not own this space. You are not responsible for this space. You are just responsible for not breaking it. And then if it does break, you can call them and they can come and fix it and replace it. And for most things, it's not something that you personally have to handle so that is really nice it's really nice not to have that responsibility that is one of the perks of renting is to just have everything kind of set up for you and taken care of for you and you're just kind of here temporarily using it but when you're a homeowner everything is yours you own it you bought it you're responsible for it if anything happens you got to find out who to call and schedule them to come out and fix it and it's just a lot more maintenance and a lot more work obviously to look after a home and make sure that everything is in order and especially if you have a larger home that has more rooms or more features that's just more things that can go wrong more bathrooms that can overflow and flood more appliance you know just 
you know, it's definitely way different. Like even in my apartment, I maybe had, you know, one or two bathrooms. So if anything went wrong, it was just that one thing. But like here I have multiple bathrooms, multiple areas of plumbing, multiple areas of like electrician work. Like there's just so many different things that could go wrong in all the different rooms. And not to sound super negative or anything, but after me only living in this house for a year, I have already had to call every type of person that you can call, like a plumber, an electrician, the internet guy, the whatever, like I've, anything that can go wrong has already like low key gone wrong because this stuff just requires a lot of maintenance. You know, a lot of stuff that is in houses, especially these days, like I sound like my dad right now, but like these days they don't make blah, blah, blah like they used to. They, back in my day, they used to last for 20 years, but these ones only last for one year. I don't know if that's true, but it seems like it's true because a lot of stuff is just not really holding up and it just requires a lot of maintenance. So that's just one thing to also obviously keep in mind if you're looking to buy a house, be aware of the true ongoing, ongoing responsibility that really goes into being a homeowner compared to like renting in an apartment. And with that ongoing responsibility and possibilities for problems, that is an ongoing cost or expense that you are at risk of having. So it's like realizing, hey, I'm gonna have to shell out some money to maintain all these different parts of my house. So you gotta factor that into your budget as well. So those were the five negative things. To recap, number one, you cannot furnish a home in two days. Number two, if you're trying to make something look really nice and professionally designed, then maybe you should hire a professional designer. Number three, be careful when you're ordering stuff because a lot of things can go wrong when you're ordering big, expensive furniture. Number four, when you're hiring a contractor, be very careful about who you are hiring. Get a second and third opinion and make sure to see pictures and proof of their work and don't rush into anything. And number five, you have to be very aware of the responsibility of the ongoing maintenance and how much time that can take out of your life to maintain everything and how much money it can cost out of your budget as well. So those were five negative things that I realized. Now let's talk about the positives because there are a lot of positives to being a homeowner and having your own space. First and foremost, I do love my house, okay? No, no regrets. I'm not saying I hate my house. I should have never bought a house. Like, I don't feel that way. Um, I, I'm happy that I bought a house. I think it was a really, really good decision for me and my lifestyle and everything that I have going on. Is it the right decision for everyone? Obviously not. We all are in different situations and no way am I saying that buying a home is the thing to do and if you're renting an apartment, you're stupid. Like, no, not at all. This is just my personal situation. So some positive things for me about owning a home is number one, with me being so into interior design and home decor and just creativity and art and expressing myself, I love the fact that I have full freedom now. Full 100% anything my heart desires, freedom, when it comes to decorating my home. Living in rented spaces, apartments, like you are just so limited in what you can do. You're always having to work around some sort of rule. If you paint the walls, you gotta paint them right back. You don't really wanna put wallpaper up. You obviously can't rip down any walls or customize anything with the actual structure of the place. Like you're just really limited with renting. And even if you are allowed to change stuff, usually you have to change it back before you move out. And that is a real pain. So with owning my own home and especially with building my own home, even though this wasn't a 100% custom home, a lot of things about the building process, if you guys go back and watch my videos about it, a lot of things were very customizable. So with the structure of the home itself, I was able to have a lot of freedom. And then of course, with the whole interior and decorating and doing the landscaping and doing the patio, I can pretty much do whatever I want within reason and within my own budget. Something I always notice about apartments is like I would look in an apartment I'd be like, ooh, this is a great location, great space, good amount of rooms, cool windows, but like, ew, why do they have these lime green countertops and weird purple cabinets? Like, no, I didn't see anything that crazy, but like I would just look at kind of some of the design choices that they made within the apartment. Like one of the apartments I lived in, all the walls and everything were like yellow and olive green, which is just so not my style. And for someone like me who works from home, shoots my content in my, like my home is my backdrop for my work, for my creativity. If I'm living in a space that is 
in my opinion, ugly, <laughs> that's gonna bring my mood down. That's gonna bring my, like, I'm gonna feel like I can't even film content in there. And so that was always a struggle of mine. Like, dang, I'm not even allowed to change these cabinets or these countertops or these walls. But now I can set everything up how I want it to be. And that is a huge plus for me personally with the type of life that I live and the type of job that I have. Second thing is that living in a nice neighborhood with nice neighbors and having this community around me is really refreshing and really nice, especially because I do have a four-year-old daughter and I really did wanna give her a family-friendly environment to kind of like grow up in and become friends with the neighborhood kids and go to the neighborhood park or playground or neighborhood pool and like my neighborhood is really really family friendly and they really put a lot of effort into having those nice amenities that are good for kids and families and doing a lot of like community activities and different like events and stuff like that that they have for the people who live here so that aspect of it is really nice because it's just nice to have you know to know my neighbors and get to know people permanently because even when i lived in a town home like i had neighbors but they were constantly moving in and out like it was never one person just staying there so I never like I would meet them and then they would be moving out the next month or the neighbors that did stay on on one side of me for a while they were cuckoo I don't know if some of y'all remember from like my snapchat stories back in the day they were not they were not cool people so this is much nicer to know that I live in a very family friendly environment my neighbors you know have kids and like it's just a really nice environment. And the third positive is one of the more obvious ones, which is the financial benefit. Obviously, if I am just renting an apartment, that money is just kind of it's not anything that I own, it's not anything permanent, it's not anything that is an investment, it's just me paying to live somewhere and that money just kind of feels like it's just disappearing and I don't know, flying away every month. And especially for me, with the specific places that I was living and the specific things that I was looking for in an apartment, I was paying a lot of money for rent. Some would even argue a crazy amount of money for rent. Whereas now, I make my monthly payment but it's going to, it's for my mortgage, it's for an investment, it's for a home that I own. So instead of just feeling like my money is kind of just floating away, I know that I am paying down my mortgage and I'm gaining equity and also my property is appreciating so I'm gaining even more equity. So it's just a nice feeling honestly to know that I am putting my money into something that I own and that is mine and that it's an investment and it's something I can actually physically feel like I can hold on to and you know see where my money is going versus with renting you don't get so much of that feeling. And the fourth positive thing is also a financial thing, but it is the tax benefits of being a homeowner. The interest that I'm paying on my mortgage is tax deductible, so that gives me a little bit of a break when it comes time to pay Uncle Sam. And then the fifth positive thing, or just, you know, naming five for now, but there are plenty more, but the last one for now is that I feel a lot less confined now that I was able to buy a large home versus being in an apartment or being in a small town home because even with some of the largest town homes and apartments and places for rent that I was able to find in my area it still never felt like enough space because of the fact that I work from home and I wanted a studio space and I wanted Zaya to have her own room and I wanted to be able to entertain and I wanted to just be able to do a lot of different things from my home, just specific situation where I really wanted a lot of space. Not because I have a huge family or anything, obviously it's just Zaya and I, but because my home also basically doubles as a business establishment as well. So when I was renting, I was having, I could not find places that would allow me that type of space and the perfect type of layout for everything. But with me building this home, I feel like I finally have more than enough space to do all the things things that I want to do, to be productive, to not feel cramped and confined, and to also feel like I'm able to give Zaya the best of the best because now she has a backyard that she can play in. Now she has, you know, her own room, her own bathroom, and her own playroom, and just things like that that I would really have never gotten out of like renting an apartment. So I think even with all of the negatives and even more negatives that I didn't even mention before, it really is worth it with, you know, keeping in mind that this is an investment 
investment and keeping in mind how nice it is to just be in my own space, have full freedom over how I want it to be and not feel confined in a smaller space anymore. I just could never imagine myself going back into renting an apartment now. I mean, obviously, why would I do that now? I mean, I don't know. Never say never. Life comes at you fast. That is my little spiel. Five negatives, five positives. Of course, that's not covering every single thing. If you guys do have more questions or more specific things that you wanted me to touch on or talk about that I have not touched on in all the rest of my home videos over the past year, definitely comment down below. Let me know what you want to know. And I can definitely do more videos like this, like just sit down videos. I just, I'm not sure if you guys are interested or not. So I kind of like to gauge your interest and see what your questions are. So definitely comment down below. But once again, if you have not seen my whole entire journey leading up to this point and you have questions, I would highly recommend checking out my home playlist. I will leave a link down below for all of my home related stuff. So definitely check out those videos and all the links that I will have down below. In the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.